previous lecture we had seen the parts of brain and the cavities of brain now we will study the cavities one by one so today we will see the lateral ventricles of brain the cavities of brain is also called as the ventricles of the brain so there are the two lateral ventricle a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle so today we will see the lateral ventricle of brain this lateral ventricle of brain its definition or its introduction these are two irregular cavities these are two irregular cavities so the lateral ventricles of the brain are the two irregular cavities this each cavity which communicate with the third ventricle so these are two irregular cavities which communicate with the third ventricle this is the lateral view of the lateral ventricle this lateral ventricle this cavity it communicate with the third ventricle so these are the two irregular cavities each cavity communicate with the third ventricle through the foramen it is also called as foramen of munro it is to be also called as foramen of munro and now the situation the situation this lateral ventricle they are situated in the each cerebral hemisphere the cerebral hemisphere or the cerebrum this is the larger part of the brain this is the very larger part of the brain and these lateral ventricles they are situated one in the each cerebral hemisphere now we will see the parts of the lateral ventricle this lateral ventricle is divided into sub parts for example the first one is the central part the central part this is the central part of the lateral ventricle and there are three horns or three cornus horns are also called as cornus so there are three cornus or three horns they are anterior posterior and the inferior horn so see we are seeing here the lateral view of the lateral ventricles so lateral ventricles this is our central part which is first one and the second one is the three horn the horn which is extending anteriorly in the frontal lobe is called as anterior horn the horn which is extending behind in the occipital lobe is called as posterior horn and the horn which is going below in the temporal lobe that is called as inferior horn so the parts it is having a central part and the three horns the horns are anterior posterior and the inferior this is the central part of the third ventricle which is seen in the lateral view and this is the anterior horn which is projecting in the frontal lobe this is the posterior horn which is projecting in the occipital lobe and this is the inferior horn which is projecting with the within the temporal lobe so <clears throat> see this lateral ventricle they are connecting with the third ventricle this is called as the foramen of munro we have seen it is connected with the third ventricle with the help of a foramen called as foramen of munro so this is the foramen of munro we have the two lateral ventricles as we are seeing the lateral view so this is only a single lateral ventricle which is connected with the this third ventricle through this foramen called as foramen of munro now we will see the parts of lateral ventricle in detail now the first part of lateral ventricle was central part as we had shown in the uh, earlier in the figure that the lateral ventricle it is the having a central part this central part it is elongated anteroposteriorly so the length is increased anteroposteriorly that's why it is elongated anteroposteriorly it extends from interventricular foramina or foramina of munro anteriorly so this central part which extends from interventricular foramina anteriorly while up to the splenium of corpus callosum posteriorly so these are the extensions of the the central part the central part which is extended from the interventricular foramina or foramina of munro anteriorly up to the splenium of corpus callosum posteriorly because this lateral ventricle lies 
on the below the corpus callosum or the on the under surface of corpus callosum now we will see the boundaries of this lateral ventricle see anteriorly as we had seen anteriorly it is continuous with the anterior horn so uh, before or beyond the interventricular foramina there is a anterior horn anterior horn of the this lateral ventricle which extends in the frontal lobe now posteriorly it is bounded by the splenium of corpus callosum as we have seen it is extended posteriorly up to the splenium of corpus callosum so posteriorly it is bounded by the splenium of corpus callosum now the roof roof it is bounded and i and i have told you that the it lies on the under surface of corpus callosum so roof is formed by the under surface of corpus callosum so the roof of the lateral ventricle lies below the corpus callosum now floor this floor it is formed by the four structure which is from lateral to medial from lateral to medial the floor is formed by the four structure the most lateral structure is the body of caudate nucleus then stria terminalis then thalamo striat vein then lateral part of the thalamus so the floor which is formed from lateral to medial by the four structure number 1 body of caudate nucleus number 2 stria terminalis number 3 thalamo striat vein and number 4 lateral part of thalamus now the medial wall this medial wall which is uh, forming with the help of septum pellucidum this septum pellucidum that separates the two lateral ventricle and we have seen the lateral ventricle they are two in number so both the lateral ventricular are separated with the help of septum pellucidum and the body of fornix so medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum and body of fornix now we will see the second part that is the three horn as we had seen it is having a central part and three horn so the first horn is the anterior horn so we will see the boundaries of anterior horn how the anterior horn is bounded this anterior horn anteriorly it is lies by the posterior surface of genu of corpus callosum as i have told you the anterior part of the lateral ventricle which lies or the lateral ventricle which lies below the corpus callosum so here anteriorly there is a, it is bounded by the posterior surface of genu at the rostrum of corpus callosum then roof roof this is formed by the anterior part of trunk of corpus callosum so the roof it is formed by the anterior part of the trunk of corpus callosum while its floor floor is formed by the head of caudate nucleus and the under surface of the rostrum of corpus callosum and the medial wall this medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum as i have told you the septum pellucidum is the part which separates the two lateral ventricle so the medial wall of this anterior horn it is formed by the septum pellucidum and fornix especially the column of fornix see it is seen here that the medial wall this is the lateral ventricle and this is the anterior horn of lateral ventricle its uh, medial wall it is formed by the septum pellucidum and the column of fornix this is the septum pellucidum which separates the two lateral ventricle and this is the column of fornix so they form the medial wall and this anteriorly as i told you posterior surface of genu and the rostrum of corpus callosum see this is the corpus callosum this lateral ventricle they lies under the cover of corpus callosum or under cover of corpus callosum and this is the coronal section if we are taking the coronal section of a brain then we can able to see this diagram and the roof the anterior part of the trunk of corpus callosum so roof it is formed by as the roof means the lateral ventricle lies below the corpus callosum so the part which lies uh, the anterior horn which lies below the anterior part of the trunk of corpus callosum while its floor as we have seen the floor floor is formed by in the central part the floor is formed by the uh, caudate nucleus here the floor is formed by the head of caudate nucleus there was the body of caudate nucleus so the anterior part of the caudate nucleus is the head 
so here the floor is formed by the head of quadrate nucleus and the under surface of rostrum of corpus callosum which extend downward so that will form the floor of the corpus callosum so these are the boundaries of anterior horn of lateral ventricle now we will see the posterior horn this posterior horn of the lateral ventricle it lies behind the splenium of the corpus callosum and it extend in the occipital lobe as we have seen the anti horn which lies in front of the interventricular foramina and lies in the frontal lobe here it lies behind the splenium of corpus callosum and it extend in the occipital lobe now the boundaries boundaries the floor and the medial wall of this posterior horn it is bounded by the bulb of posterior horn this bulb of posterior horn is raised by the forceps major so this is the bulb of posterior horn this bulb of posterior horn which is raised by the forceps major and the second thing is the calcar avis this calcar avis this is the calcarine sulcus the elevation which is formed by the calcarine sulcus or the raised by the it is raised by the calcarine sulcus so the calcar avis is nothing but the the sulcus which is raised by the calcarine uh, sulcus is called as the calcar avis so the bulb of posterior horn this bulb this is the bulb of posterior horn and this is the calcarine sulcus this forms the floor and the medial wall of the this posterior horn now the last that is the inferior horn this inferior horn of the lateral ventricle of brain is the largest horn jitne bhi horn humne dekhe anti horn then posterior horn and the inferior horn so the inferior horn is the largest one and it extend in the temporal lobe as we have seen the anti horn which extend in the frontal lobe the posterior horn which extend in the occipital lobe and the inferior horn which extend in the temporal lobe it is bounded so boundaries of this inferior horn it is roof roof is bounded by the tapetum number 2 tail of quadrate nucleus number 3 stria terminis number 4 amygdaloid body so this is the roof of the this inferior horn so the roof of the inferior horn is formed by the stria terminalis so this is the stria terminalis and this is the tail tail of the quadrate nucleus as we have seen the body and the head of the quadrate nucleus in the other part of the boundary of the this lateral ventricle here there is a in the inferior horn the roof is bounded by tail and the tapetum so the roof which is formed by tapetum tail of quadrate nucleus stria terminalis and the amygdaloid body while as the floor the floor is bound by the bounded by the collateral eminence this collateral eminence it is raised by collateral sulcus this is the collateral sulcus this is our inferior horn this is our inferior horn and this is our the collateral sulcus this collateral eminence it is this is the collateral collateral eminence which is formed by the the collateral sulcus and the hippocampus this raised part which lies below the inferior horn is called as hippocampus so the roof of the inferior horn is formed by tapetum tail of this is the tapetum tail of quadrate nucleus stria terminalis and the amygdaloid body while as the floor floor is formed by the this collateral eminence which is raised by the collateral sulcus and the hippocampus this is the enlarged part below the inferior horn this is called as hippocampus this is all about the uh, lateral ventricle of brain thank you